Gamblers Extra. Aaron Cannon on the Manager Show on the Cape Cod Baseball Network, live from Harwich as the Anglers come to town yet again to take on the Mariners. It's game number 11 here on the 2010 campaign. Schiff, it's almost time for the first quarter report card. We'll, uh, we'll get into that tomorrow and talk about how you think this team is faring so far. But first off, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the second meeting here with the Mariners here in Harwich at White House Field. And uh, last time you guys came in here, it was a cold, damp night that went into, went into extra innings. And uh, it seems like I think it's something like 40% of the games so far have gone into extra innings. Well, you have to expect that with the – you have – instantly you have an advantage with pitchers. So the games are probably going to be low scoring because the pitchers are really still at an advantage in the first quarter of the season. They're still – the hitters are still trying to figure out the wooden bats, still trying to figure out the pitchers. Pitchers are a little stronger now. They're not weathered as much. So th there is no question you're going to see a lot of low scoring games at this point. Now, something we talked about on the broadcast last night is the effect of extra innings ball games and games that last over three hours on the players, being collegiate players and, and struggling enough to, to get up and play every day, but then having to play these longer games. Does that affect these guys down the stretch? Oh, there's no question. That, that's why uh, I've been a very big advocate of days off for the Cape Cod League. Uh, I don't know the percentage, but many of these kids are coming from heavy-duty, high-pressure conference tournaments. Then another percentage of them are going into the regionals, the Super Regionals, and the College World Series. They are mentally beat up as well as physically beat up, and then they're coming here to a pressure-packed schedule. It, it is very, very difficult, and that's why I really think it's a great idea to play the doubleheaders. I could see even more doubleheaders, but I know that it is a burden on some of the franchises, and I understand that. But the you know, I would like to see more time off for these kids. I, I, I understand there's a contradiction to that is they better get used to it because they're going to be in pro baseball next year, but they're still going back to college next year to a schedule a lot less strict than this is. And so I think that's what we have to accommodate is what they're going back to, not what they're going to see in two years or two or three or four years for some of these kids. So uh, I, I do like to I do think they're, they are seriously affected by that. Now, you mentioned high-pressure situations with the conference tournaments and moving on as the players move their way up through the World Series and, and coming on to here. And um, one thing that I have noticed here as the season progresses is more and more scouts show up, as they will tend to do over the course of the summer. Do you notice any difference in some of the players over the course of your management career when the scouts start to show up in force? Uh, not really. And most of them are going to perform at the same level uh, in June as they are in July and August. Uh, but yes, there are some guys who, you know, they know when the cameras are on them, they know when the scouts are here, and they will, you know, step it up a notch. But in most cases, um, I, I think they play, play the game the way it should be played all the time. Now 7-2-1 and one on the season so far through the first 10 games, taking on the Harwich Mariners, who have started off just a bit slow. Talk about the lineup and the starting pitcher Aaron Gates tonight. Well, Gaethje threw against Harwich last time. He's got a little familiarity with their uh, their lineup, and Gaethje throws strikes. Uh, he, he can be a power pitcher. He's a finesse pitcher also. He's in between there. Uh, we like the way he performs on the mound. We like the way he throws strikes. Uh, and he's just, you know, he, he's just a competitor on the mound. And uh, the lineup tonight, um, Riley Reynolds will be in there tonight. Jason Martin will be back in the lineup tonight. And, the you know, the usual cast of characters, so there's not a lot of changes tonight. Uh, Jacob Stallings will be behind the dish. Um, we, you know, we pretty much, we are who we are. We're just missing one more position player and um, two more position players and three more pitchers. Then we'll be rounded out. Now, uh, Ricky Oropesa recently did a Q&A with one of the local publications and mentioned that his dream is to play first base for the New York Yankees, and I've been told that you're a Yankees fan. Would you uh, would you like to see Oropesa there on the corner take over for Teixeira at some point? I would think that would be fantastic, but uh, whatever team Ricky plays for would be fantastic, and he is just having a great year, a great start for us, big improvement from last year in a lot of facets of his game, and I couldn't be happier for him. But, yeah, that would be special to see Ricky in the pinstripes. Talk a little bit more about his defensive ability. We saw him make a couple of exceptional plays last night, and then there was one ball that he chased down in foul territory that he couldn't get completely into the glove, but he got a glove on it, and that's a professional-style play if I've ever seen one. Well, we saw glimmers of this last year, but unfortunately, Ricky twisted his ankle pretty badly about the third game in, and it just never got any better. But uh, one of the, Ricky has a tremendous throwing arm, which is an amazing asset for a first baseman on relay throws, double plays, and just plays that Ricky has made. I mean, he, he won the game for us or saved the game for us over Katuit with a great play. He made a beauty last night, and his he's just a tremendous athlete at first base. And uh, like I said, it's I'm so happy for him because I know when he left last summer, he he was disappointed in his performance and really couldn't wait to come back and, you know, show us all what he can really do. 
Now, I saw him taking a couple of grounders at third yesterday during batting practice. Could we see him on the hot corner at some point during the uh, 2010 season? I, I don't know that for certain, but I would not hesitate. The, if, if, it, if there's something in the line that makes that happen, yes. Right now, he is extremely valuable where he is, but I would not hesitate if we had to do that to put him over there. Now, a, uh, a publication called Perfect Game USA recently ranked the um, uh, all the summer league teams throughout the nation, and Chatham was officially ranked number two. How does that make you feel as the uh, as the longtime manager of this squad, knowing the power of your lineup and your uh, your overall pitching staff and overall team? It's, I'm honored by that. It's it's great. It's tough to do that. How do they know? You know, they have somebody here. They're just reading the record, and I, I don't know. But it, we're very honored to, to be thought of in that. But l let's see where we're ranked at the end of the year. That's the one that counts. He's John Schiffner. I'm Aaron Canada. It's the Manager Show on the Cape Cod Baseball Network. Go Anglers!